morning. We welcome you once again to our Golden Lampstand online service. It's good to have you with us once again today. Today I'd like to read from Isaiah chapter 54, verses 4 to 5, even as we prepare our hearts to come into the presence of the Lord. Isaiah 54, verses 4 to 5. Do not be afraid, you will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace, you will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband, the Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful that you are our Father. We are so thankful that you are the God of the heavens and the earth. You are our maker and our creator. And we thank you that you have called us to be your own. Father, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving and praise. We worship you with our hearts. And we also pray that the Spirit of God will minister to each one of us. Even as we look to you this morning, in the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. share with you from the book of Jeremiah. We are moving into the book of Jeremiah and I'd like to share with you from Jeremiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 8 and I've entitled my message The Broken Covenant. Let me start by reading the text to you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 8. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant. 
and tell them to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem. Tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Cursed is the man who does not obey the terms of this covenant. The terms I commanded your forefathers when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace, I said, obey me and do everything I command you and you would be my people and I would be your God. Then I will fulfill the oath I swore to your forefathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you possess today. I answered, Amen, Lord. The Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Listen to the terms of this covenant and follow them. From the time I brought your forefathers up from Egypt until today, I warned them again and again, saying, Obey me. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubbornness of their evil hearts. So I brought on them all the curses of the covenant I had commanded them to follow, but they did not keep. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We want to pray that even as we meditate upon your word, we will take heed to your word. We will be careful of the way we live and we will hold on to the covenant that we have made with you. We want to pray that you bless the reading and the preaching of this word so that we would hear you speak into our hearts. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me start with a brief summary about the book of Jeremiah. Then we will look into chapter 11 and we will look at the problem and the whole problem seems to be the broken covenant. Let me begin by sharing with you about the book itself. Now Jeremiah has got 52 chapters and is one of the major prophetic books of the Old Testament. It is the second longest prophetic book of the Old Testament after Isaiah. Isaiah has got 66 chapters. And if you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1 itself gives us a rough understanding of the whole book. It gives us an introduction to the book and also to the life of Jeremiah the prophet himself. So let's work through some of these verses to get a general understanding of the book. Now verse 1 tells us that Jeremiah was the son of a priest, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. So he was from a priestly line and verse 2 tells us that he prophesied during the reigns of Josiah all the way down to Zedekiah and that was about from 626 BC to 585 BC. So during this about 40 years of Jeremiah's ministry, he prophesied to kings Josiah, King Jehoahaz, King Jehoiakim, King Jehoiachin, and also King Zedekiah. But let's speak about the call of Jeremiah. It's recorded from verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So God clearly told Jeremiah that God knew him even before he was born. God appointed him as a prophet to the nations even before he was born. But this also tells us about how God works in our lives before we were born God knew us and before we were born he also set us apart he appointed us for the various tasks that he has entrusted each and every one of us but let's move on to jeremiah jeremiah was called at a very young age it's believed that he began his ministry in his late teens from about 17 to the age of 20 and this is reflected in verse 6 where it's Ah, oh, Sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. Verse 7, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever 
I command you. And we know that his ministry was also a difficult ministry as reflected in verse 8. God said to him, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. I like to highlight God saying to Jeremiah, I will rescue you. Because throughout the book of Jeremiah, we see Jeremiah going through different types of suffering. He goes through persecutions and he has a very difficult ministry. Let me highlight some of the things he's been through in his ministry. Jeremiah was beaten. He was put in stocks. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 1 and 2. Jeremiah was sentenced to death chapter 26 verse 11 the king zedekiah burnt jeremiah's scrolls jeremiah 36 verse 23 jeremiah was put in a vaulted cell in a dungeon jeremiah 37 verse 16 he was thrown into a cistern and left there to die in the mud jeremiah 38 verse 6 he was bound in chains, Jeremiah 40 verse 1, and they called him all kinds of names, including a liar. We read about that in Jeremiah 43 verse 2, and these are some of the difficult things that he went through. But God told him right from the beginning that God would be with him and that God himself will rescue him. And in verse 9, the Lord reached out his hand, touched Jeremiah's mouth and put words into his mouth. But what was Jeremiah's message? Let's go to verse 10. Verse 10 says, Today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and plant. So Jeremiah was to uproot and tear down, he was to destroy and overthrow, and yet at the same time he was to build and plant. When we look at the name Jeremiah itself, Jeremiah or in Hebrew, Yermiyahu, basically comes from two words. One word is to build, exalt, to extol, to lift up, to go up. But that word could also mean to take away, to take off, to take up, or to breed worms. And the second word is Yahu or Yah, the name of God. So putting these two words together, we have Yah will rise or Yah will raise up. So putting Jeremiah, Yerme Yahu, within the context of the book, we see that God is telling the people he would either raise them up, he would bring them up, and he would be exalted among them, or God could take away, God could take them off and destroy them. But we'll come to this a little later. Now, Jeremiah's ministry involved three things. There was preaching, which is teaching, admonition, encouragement, warning, and prophecies. But it also involved acting. God would ask him to act out things to explain a message or to give them a message. So Jeremiah's life in itself was a message and it reminds us of how our lives need to be God's message to the people around us. And the third thing is that Jeremiah's message came to the people by way of writing. Jeremiah 36 verse 2, God said, take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel. So he wrote things that God told him and then in Jeremiah 36 verse 4, the word of God says, So Jeremiah called Baruch son of Nereah, and while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord had spoken to him, Baruch wrote them on scrolls. And Baruch took it upon himself to collect all of Jeremiah's prophecies and put them down in writing. Now, the message of Jeremiah centers around two visions that God gave the prophet Jeremiah during his call. The first vision is in verse 11 and 12, where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, what do you see, Jeremiah? I see a branch of an almond tree, I replied. 
The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So the first message of Jeremiah is simply this, God is watching. And God is not pleased with what he sees, so God calls for a change. And he is watching to see that his word is fulfilled. Now, to me, this is basically about the fear of God. The fear of God is about being aware that God is watching us and that he is either pleased or he is not pleased by what he sees in what we are doing. So the first message of Jeremiah is simply this, God is watching. The second message of Jeremiah is from verses 13 to 16. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a boiling pot tilting away from the north, I answered. The Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshipping what their hands have made. So God says there will be judgment. Judgment will come because of wickedness. Judgment will come because they have gone after other gods. They have burned incense to other gods and they are worshipping things that their hands have made. But having said that, we also know that within every message of judgment, there is always a message of hope. If the people turn back to the people of Jerusalem, it was the last hour, but there was still hope if they repented and turned back to God. And there's just one more thing I'd like to highlight before we go into chapter 11, and that is Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet and we see his lamentations in the book of lamentation that comes after the book of jeremiah but let me read you jeremiah chapter 13 verse 17 where the word of god says but if you do not listen i will weep in secret because of your pride my eyes will weep bitterly overflowing with tears because the lord's flock will be taken captive so as jeremiah thinks about what is going to happen to the Israelite, he weeps, he is full of emotions. Jeremiah 14 verse 17, the word of God says, speak this to them, let my eyes overflow with tears night and day without ceasing, for my virgin daughter, my people, has suffered a grievous wound, a crushing blow. So we see the heart of Jeremiah full of emotions we see the heart of god a god who is broken because of the rebellion of the people a god who is torn because of the suffering that would come upon god's people because of their wickedness because of their idolatry and then we see in jeremiah chapter 31 verse 16 the word of god says this is what the lord says restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work will be rewarded declares the lord they will return from the land of the enemy so god tells jeremiah god comforts jeremiah and tells jeremiah to stop weeping because god has a plan of salvation for his people and that is the general theme that was in isaiah that is the general theme that is in jeremiah and the general theme that is is also in the book of Ezekiel and so we see Jeremiah weeping and then we see God also weeping and I would like to draw your attention to the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament in Luke chapter 19 verse 41 and 42 the Word of God says as the Lord Jesus Christ approached Jerusalem and saw the city he wept over it and said if you even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace but now it is hidden 
from your eyes so when the Lord Jesus Christ saw the people just as Jeremiah saw the people in their rebellion in their disobedience as a father sees his children in that rebellion and in that disobedience and as the Lord Jesus Christ saw the people in that same rebellion and that same disobedience in that hardness of their heart the Lord Jesus Christ also he wept over them and what I would like all of us to capture is the heart of the father as he sees his children in rebellion and in wickedness as he sees his children reject him and run after other gods the tears and the emotions of the father are the same as Jeremiah and the Lord Jesus Christ now going into Jeremiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 8 let me just highlight a few things the first thing I want to highlight to you is that they were a covenant people Jeremiah chapter 11 verses 2 and 3 listen to the terms of this covenant and tell to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem tell them this is what the Lord the God of Israel says Cursed is the man who does not obey the terms of this covenant. So they must adhere to the terms and the conditions of the covenant. They cannot live as people without a covenant. And that reminds us that we ourselves today are a covenant people. And we cannot do what we want because we are covenanted to God. Just as the Israelites were covenanted to God, they could not go after other gods. They could not live in rebellion. They could not live in wickedness because they had a covenant with God. But the question we need to ask is when did the covenant take place? Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 4 and 5 The terms I commanded your forefathers when I brought them out of Egypt out of the iron smelting furnace I said obey me and do everything I command you and you will be my people and I will be your God then I will fulfill the oath I swore to your forefathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey the land you possess today I answered Amen Lord now the covenant took place when God brought them out of Egypt the covenant took place at Passover when they shed the blood of the lamb and they put it on their doorposts that's when the covenant took place and to fulfill the covenant God brought them out of Egypt he protected them from Pharaoh he broke their bondage and set them free he watched over them in the desert and wilderness he brought them into the promised land and poured out his blessings upon them why it all begin during the time of Moses Exodus chapter 6 verse 5 God said moreover I've heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving and I have remembered my covenant the covenant to Abraham the covenant to Isaac the covenant to Jacob therefore say to the Israelites I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment I will take you as my own people and I will be your God then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob I will give it to you as a possession I am the Lord and this was God's side of the covenant and God fulfilled everything the terms and conditions of the covenant was that God said obey me and do everything I command you and you will be my people and I will be your God so what actually is the covenant the covenant is simply this I will be your God and you will be my people now having said that we as Christians are also people of the covenant and then we ask the question when did our covenant happen Matthew 26 verse 26 to 28 while they were eating Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying 
take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. When did our covenant take place? Our covenant took place when the Lord Jesus Christ poured out his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. It started on the night he was betrayed. Throughout the night he was persecuted and tortured and all the way to Calvary he shed his blood throughout the journey until he shed all his blood on the cross. We have become people of that covenant when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. Romans chapter 11 verse 27 says, And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. When our sins were taken away and placed on the cross, we became a covenant people. And what is the promise of Christ's covenant to us? John 14 verse 2 and 3, the word of God says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So what is the promise of the covenant to us? Just as in the Old Testament, God led his people out of slavery, out of bondage, through the wilderness and into the promised land, the Lord Jesus Christ frees us from all our bondages, all our sins, and he leads us through life until we are brought into his promised land, into his presence in heaven. And what is the term and condition of the covenant? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 14 to 16 says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am. Am holy the terms and conditions of our covenant because we do not come under the law but under grace is to be holy because our Lord and Savior is holy and he died in holiness for our sins now the problem with the Israelites comes in verse 8 where it says but they did not listen or pay attention instead they followed the stubbornness of their heart so I brought on them all the curses of the covenant I had commanded them to follow, but they did not keep. So the word says they did not listen or pay attention. The word says instead they followed the stubbornness of their heart. So I brought on them all the curses of the covenant. Now I want to go back to Jeremiah chapter 7 and we want to look at the temple sermon and this is literally a sermon that Jeremiah preached outside the temple as the people came into the temple. Let me read to you from verses 1 to 4, Jeremiah 7 verses 1 to 4. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house there and proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Reform your ways and your actions and I would let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. What Jeremiah was basically saying is this. He was saying that you are not protected by the temple. You are not protected because of your rituals at the temple. You are not protected because of your sacrifices at the temple. You cannot say that you are at the temple of the Lord, at the temple of the Lord, at the temple of the Lord, and escape the wrath that comes from God because their lives were wicked. They 
they oppressed the aliens the fatherless and the widows they were quick to shed innocent blood they followed other gods to their own harm they stole they murdered people they committed adultery they committed perjury they burned incense to Baal and they followed gods that were unknown to them so jeremiah chapter 10 and 11 says then you come and stand before me in this house which bears my names and say we are safe safe to do all these detestable things has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you but i have been watching declares the lord so what god was saying is that you cannot do all the evil you do outside the temple and then come into this temple and take this temple as a sanctuary for your evil he was saying that you have made this like a den of robbers you rob on the outside and come to your den so that you are protected within the den the problem was simply this, how they were on the outside was contradicting what they were on the inside. And that was their problem, their wickedness, their rebellion, the evil that they had on the inside. And they came into the temple thinking that all their rituals, all their sacrifices, all the offerings was there to protect them from all the evil they were doing and that they were free to go out once again to commit the same evil. But let's move on to the New Testament. The Lord Jesus Christ found the same problem with the teachers of the law. He found the same problem with the Pharisees. They were something on the outside, but something different on the inside. Let me read Matthew chapter 23, verse 25 to 28 to you. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and indulgence blind pharisee first clean the inside of the cup and dish then the outside also will be clean woe to you teachers of the law and pharisees you hypocrites you are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside but on the inside are full of dead man's bones and everything unclean in the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Now when the Lord Jesus Christ saw the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the religious people, he found that they had the same problem. On the outside they were different, but on the inside they had wickedness. On the inside they had rebellion. On the inside they were evil, but on the outside they portrayed themselves to be holy. Now the moral of the message is simply this, the outside and the inside must be the same. What people see us on the outside and what God sees us on the inside must be the same. And I want to end by going back to Jeremiah chapter 1, the message of Jeremiah. The message concerning the almond tree, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. The word of the Lord came to me, what do you see Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. I would just like to end on this note, God is watching us. And God is watching us to see whether we are his covenant people, whether we adhere to the terms and conditions of the covenant. But much more than that, God is watching to see whether our inside is just as clean as our outside. God is watching to see how we live our lives. God is watching and observing everything that we do in our lives. And one of the things that we must do is we must have the fear of God, the fear of God to know that God is watching us. 
let us pray father we thank you for your word we want to pray for each one of us even as we meditate upon your word as we see the rebellion of the people during the time of jeremiah we want to pray that you help us to turn away from rebellion you help us to turn away from wickedness and we want to pray that we will live our lives in holiness in accordance to the covenant that the lord jesus christ has made with each and every one of us in the lord jesus name we pray amen
the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again at our Golden Lampstand online service. The Lord bless you and be with you in the coming week.